Well, we're in a series of messages talking about the kingdom is like. And so if you have your Bible, I'd like for you to turn to one passage today. Turn with me to Matthew chapter 25. Matthew chapter 25. We're looking at what the kingdom of heaven is like. I just want to remind you what we're really talking about is we're not talking about one day we're going to get to experience this. What we're actually talking about is how do we get to the place of bringing the kingdom of God here on earth? Well, if you don't know what it's like, then you won't know what to bring here on earth. And so Jesus prayed this prayer when he was, uh, he said, when you pray, you should pray like this. And you know the prayer, our Father, which art in heaven. But there's a little line in there that's really awesome. He says, your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. And what Jesus is saying is, uh, Father, let your kingdom that's in heaven come be on earth. And so we need to be kingdom people. God is not waiting for you to live a kingdom life when you get in the kingdom. He wants you to live the kingdom life now before you ever arrive in the kingdom of heaven. And so we need to know what the kingdom is like to bring it here on earth. And today we're talking about the parable uh, the, of Jesus that says, the, it's called the parable of the talents. And so I want to look at that with me. So look, Matthew chapter 25, we're going to begin reading in verse 14. And it says, and again, it will be like, and again, I just want you to notice, I'll pull your attention to a couple of words there. He says, again, in other words, Jesus over and over again is talking about the kingdom and it will be like. And so he says again, Listen, if Jesus keeps repeating different stories about the same subject, do you think it might be important? Again, it will be like a man going on a journey who called his servants and entrusted his wealth to them. To one, I was, again, just notice those words said he's entrusting his wealth to us. To one, he gave five bags of gold, to another two bags, to another one bag, each according to his ability. Then he went on his journey. The man who had received five bags of gold went at once and put his money to work and gained five more bags. So also the one with two bags of gold gained two more. But the man who had received one bag went off and dug a hole in the ground and hid his master's money. I want you to just notice the word masters there. And we're going to see multiple times he's going to use this word master. Okay. Look at verse 19. After a long time, the master, there it is again, of those servants returned and settled the accounts with them. The man who had received five bags of gold brought the other five. Master, he said, you entrusted me. You trusted me. You entrusted me with five bags of gold. See, I have gained five more. His master replied, well done, good and faithful servant. You have been faithful with a few things. I will put you in charge of many things. Come and share your master's happiness. The man with two bags of gold also came. Master, he said, you entrusted me with two bags of gold. See, I have gained two more. His master replied, well done, good and faithful servant. You have been faithful with a few things. I will put you in charge of many things. Come and share your master's happiness. Then the man who had received one bag of gold came. Master, he said, I knew that you are a hard man, harvesting where you have not sown, gathering where you have not scattered seed. So I was afraid. And I went out and hid your gold in the ground. See here is what belongs to you. His master replied, and this is the ninth time the word master is used in this passage. His master replied, you wicked, lazy servant. So you knew that, a, that I harvest where I've not sown, gather where I've not scattered seed. When then, well then, you should have put my money on deposit with the bankers so that when I return, I would have received it back with interest. So take the bag of gold from him and give it to the one who has 10 bags. For, for whoever has will be given more and they will have an abundance. Whoever does not have, even what they have will be taken from them and throw that worthless servant outside into the darkness where there will be weeping and gnashing of teeth. Well, there's several things that I want you to notice here in this story today as we look at it. And I just, I just want you to think with me for just a second that when God gives to us something, uh, it says here that he gave him uh, 
One version says gold. Another version says silver. Uh, and then, uh, you know, I think if, you're, if you know the New King James Version, the King James Version says a talent. I gave them five talents. So the question is, what is it that God is giving them? So I want you to just think about it for a minute. Obviously, I think, the, the, you know, if we're really going to narrow it down, this is not, he's not talking about something that's, uh, uh, I can't think of the word right now, sorry. You know, uh, He's, he's not just saying, he's not using this euphorically. He's not using this. He's, he's really, literally saying money. He's literally talking about money here. But I think that you could actually take the terminology when he begins to say he gave him five uh, bags of gold or he gave him five bags of money or he gave him five bags of silver or he gave him five talents. I think you could literally flip that and say that he gave him resources. Okay, so when we have resources, when we begin to talk about resources, every person needs to understand we all have three resources. I don't know if you know this or not. Obviously, the one that he's talking about here is money, so we all have treasure. I don't know if you know that. We all have treasure of some, on some level. Uh, and then, as I want you to notice this, not only does he have treasure, think about another resource that every person has. We all have talents. In other words, we have abilities. We all have giftings that are within us. And then the third resource that we all have is time. Now, if you know this or not, time is a resource, uh, and you can't make more of it, right? And so time, talents, and treasure, these are the three resources that they have. And uh, then the other thing I want you to notice is that God doesn't always give us all the same amount of resources. Okay, we all have the same amount of time, but we don't all have the same abilities. We don't all have the same giftings within us. We don't all have the same financial resources. I, uh, I, I, I'm very jealous of Pastor Lisa. I'm very jealous of her because she has abilities that I do not have. I'm just telling you. I, I am, I, I, she has the ability. She can play the piano. She, can, she, she has the talent to be able to play the keyboard, to play the piano. And then, you know, one day she, she used to when she would lead us. I don't know if you remember or not. When she would lead worship, Especially when we were in the old building, she always played the keyboard, just always played it. You just, that's where she would lead. She would have a keyboard right in the middle. She'd lead us in worship, just playing the keyboard. And then one day she decided, you know what? I'd like to be able to play the acoustic guitar. So six months later, she's playing the acoustic guitar. I don't have that ability. I'm just telling you, I don't have that kind of talent. My parents wasted their resources. <laughs> They gave me five and a half years of piano. <laughs> like, we had a concert pianist to teach me. I don't, they should feel very disappointed. I mean, I'm just telling you, they took the money, and I'd never learned to play the piano. And so five and a half years, and if on a really good day that I can really remember, I can play Mary Had a Little Lamb with one finger, maybe. I'm just telling you. So that's, that's five and a half years. I don't know how much money... Y'all spend a lot of money. <laughs> Sorry, Mom. Anyway, so here's the thing. We don't all have an equal amount of resources. We don't have equal amount of ability. We don't have an equal amount of talents. Okay, you need to understand this, but God's not saying, well, if you just had the talents of so-and-so, here's what we like to do. Well, I'd serve the Lord if I had more talents. I'd serve the Lord if I had more treasure. Uh, I'd, I'd serve the Lord if I had more time. Listen to me very carefully. These three people, one had five, one had three, two, and one had one, right? Three different amounts. God does not distribute equally across the board, but he does give us according to our own ability to be able to handle it. Notice uh, with me, back at verse 15. To one he gave five, to one two, to another one, watch these words, each according to his ability. God can look at you and know what ability that you have and determine whether he's going to give you five or two or one or ten. But that's God determines that. And God, it's not that God goes, well, I don't believe they have the ability. God knows what you have the ability for. Uh, let me say this a different way. A gift given to the wrong person at the wrong time can quickly become a curse. Some of you are, you just, you're, you're sitting there going, well, if I just had what someone else had, stop comparing yourself to someone else. And the reason you're comparing yourself to someone else is because you're not using your time wisely. 
You're thinking more about what they have and you're not doing anything with what God's given you. And if you're faithful with a little, he'll give you more. But you're gonna have to be faithful with what God has given you. Does that make sense? Okay, so everyone understands that. Then the the third thing I want you to notice about this is there's a master that's in the story. Um, And I think it's very important we understand this master. So nine times in this passage, he uses the word master. That Greek word for master is actually the word kurios. Now, let me tell you why I bring that up. Because uh, most of the time, this kurios is not interpreted as master. Most of the time, it's interpreted as Lord. But both words, can, this word curious can be interpreted as either master or Lord. Let me help you with this just a little bit. How are we saved? You know how you're saved? The Bible says in Romans chapter 10 that if we confess with our mouths the Lord Jesus Christ and believe in our hearts that God has raised him from the dead, we shall be saved. Is that right? Shake your head or, okay, okay, watch this. Think about this. When you confess with your mouth the Lord Jesus Christ, you are actually confessing with your mouth from this point forward, he's my master. Did you follow that? Okay, master of what? Think about this very clearly. Master of what? All of your time, all of your talents, and all of your treasure. Um, people will say, um, why? you know, I guess, I guess I can give a little bit of my money back to the Lord. Okay, listen, listen, I just want you to think about how crazy that is. Because when you call him master, what you're saying from this point forward is everything I have is yours. It's all yours. Okay. Think about it this way. When Jesus talks about the tithe, and when the Bible talks about the tithe in Malachi chapter two, uh, it says this. It says, return the tithe to the storehouse. Is that right? Okay, think about it. Think about the word return. Okay, think about this. What it's actually saying is the tenth is not yours. He's not saying, take a tenth of what you have and give it back to me. What he's saying is, take a tenth of what I've given you and return it. What you're saying is, 100% of everything I have is the Lord's. And the Lord, and here's what God says, I'm going to leave 90% with you, but I'm asking you to return 10 to me to give it back. You need to understand everything you have as a believer belongs to the Lord. By the way, you can live better on 90% that's blessed than 100% that's cursed. Are y'all following that? By the way, I would say that's about the treasure, but I would say this. You, uh, you can live better on, you know, on everything if you return 10% of your time, if you were to return 10% of your talents. And by the way, what you're gonna find is the more that you begin to return to the Lord, the more that you're gonna go, I wanna return more to the Lord. I mean, it's just gonna start happening. You say, well, I'm, I'm gonna start, you start giving a tenth. And then one day the Holy Spirit just says to you, you know what, I want you to trust me more than, than just the tenth of the tithe. I want you to trust me with eleventh and twelfth. And then just over time, you begin to give more and more and more to the Lord. I, I want you to trust me. Oh, well, I'm gonna trust the Lord with 10% of my time. Wonderful, that's great. But then there's gonna come a day where the Lord's gonna say, I want you to trust me with eleventh and a twelfth and a thirteenth. And you begin to give more back to the Lord. And by the way, you're gonna live better with less, because you're gonna say, I trust you with all of it. By the way, you need to understand, is it your money that provides your way, or is it the Lord that provides your way? You have to decide this. No man can serve two masters. And he talks about no man can serve mammon. Mammon is a god. Mammon is the god of money. You can't serve money and God. You have to choose. Do you all follow that? In other words, you're going to have to decide who is Lord over your life, your finances, right? Or the Lord is the one who provides. That's the reason why the birds of the air don't have to worry about anything because their master in heaven takes care of them. And the lilies of the field, they never toil nor spin Uh, They don't have to worry about any of that because their master, their father in heaven takes care of them. And which of you 
that God cares even more for can say that God would not take care of you too. Does, are y'all following me this? In other words, God wants to provi- be your provider. He wants you to trust him in all areas, time, talent, and treasure. Those are the resources that every person has. So we have to get to the place, if we're gonna have a kingdom life, that we say, I trust you with everything. Amen? Okay, now let's start the message. Here's point number one. And I'm, I'm gonna make it real simple today. I only have five points. Okay, so you gotta listen fast. Okay, here's point number one. The master... The Lord gives everyone a gift and everyone an opportunity. Okay, listen to me. If you're a believer, he has gifted you and has given you opportunity to use the giftings within you. Again, think about gifting, time, talent, treasure. He's given every one of you those things and 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 you have an opportunity to use them for the master. Every one of you has the same, a gift and an opportunity to be a blessing. And the question is not whether he's done that. The question is, what will you do with what he's given you? Here's number two. The master trusts you to accomplish his purpose. I don't know if you've ever thought about that, but the the master trusts you. He's trusting you. Watch what it says in verse 15. To one he gave five bags of gold, to another two bags, to another one bag, each according to his ability. Then watch this verse. Then the master, he, went on the journey. I don't don't know if you caught that or not. He's not sitting around lording over you. He has gone on a journey. Listen, I don't know if you know this or not. Jesus is not here. I know some of you are like, no, he is. No, the Holy Spirit is here. Because Jesus says, if I don't go away, the Holy Spirit won't come. Listen, Jesus has gone on a journey. He says, I'm gonna go to the right hand of my father and I'm going to prepare a place for you. And, if I, and then he says, I'm, if I do not go, the Holy Spirit won't come. So when he left, he left and the Holy Spirit came. The Holy Spirit is here, he is with us. But he is trusting you to accomplish. Uh, when, the, when, the, when the man with five bags of gold came back to the Lord, he said to him, Uh, He says, here is the five bags that you entrusted me with. You trusted me with this. Do you know that God is trusting you with all the things that he's given you? That does not mean he won't give an account for it one day. One day you're gonna have to give an account for what God has placed within you. He's trusting you now to accomplish his purposes. That leads me to this. And that says, verse number three is, the master cares more about the way you do your work than the specifics of the work that you do. <clears throat> Think about this for just a second. Uh, in other words, God wants you to do what you're going to do with integrity, uh, not, her- not hurting people, not tearing people down. He, he, he cares about the way you do it more than, uh, hey, I, hey, Lord, here's how I doubled everything that you put in my, in my power, everything you trusted me with. He doesn't care about those steps. He's more concerned with how you do it, the way that you do it, how you treat other people. That you Listen, think about this, that God loves the, think about giving for a minute. God loves a cheerful giver. He's concerned with the way that you give. I mean, there's always that person who goes, well, I'm gonna give, but I don't like it. Okay, do you think that, think about it, you have two people Let's just say it doesn't really matter. Let's just say each of them has a, a hundred bucks and, they, and that's their tithe and they're gonna give it. One says, well, I'm gonna give it because he told me I have to. And the other is gonna say, thank you, Lord, that I have a hundred dollars to give to you. Which one do you think God is going to bless? Okay, listen, God doesn't need your money. Did y'all hear me? He's concerned with the way you give it. He's concerned with the way you give your talents and your time and your treasure. He's looking for the cheerful giver. That's the one that he wants to bless. Please hear me about this. He's concerned with our attitude of our heart. By the way, do you know why God's concerned about your money? Okay, think about this. Think about what scripture says. Does scripture say, I'm asking the question, does scripture say, Where your heart is, there your treasure will also be. No. 
but I, it was a trick. <laughs> Most people believe that. They believe that it's where your heart is. Where you, no, what, you know what the scripture says? Where your treasure is, there your heart will be. Evidently, there is a string that attaches between here and here. And when you pull this out, it pulls on this here. Y'all follow that? That's the reason why sometimes for people it hurts to give because they're pulling on their heart. Okay, why would God say to return a tenth? Okay, think about this. Because what God is saying is when you give the tenth back, you're actually leading your heart. God's not concerned about your money. He's concerned about your heart. But when we give the money, what we're actually saying to God is, take my heart because I'm trusting you for everything else. Are are y'all seeing this? So he's concerned about the way you do things more than the specifics about the work that you do. Okay, let me just show it to you real quick. Matthew chapter 25, look at verse 16. The man who had received five bags of gold, watch these words, went at once and put his money to work and gained five more bags. I want you to notice the words, went at once. I think there's a lot of people who are saying to themselves, well, I'll serve the Lord one day. I'll I'll give one day. But, you know, I'm going to wait until I have more time to do that, that I have more resources to do that. Okay, just think about the silliness of this, okay? So if someone says, listen, I'll serve the Lord one day when I have more time, but I really want to wait till I'm married. Think about it. It'll hit here in a minute. Okay, those people who would say that aren't married. Because you don't get more time when you're married. You you have less time That's why Paul says it's better not to be married. (laughs) Anyway. (laughs) But if you're gonna burn, he says, get married. So that's King Mark version, but that's pretty close. So someone says, so someone says, well, okay, well, I was gonna do it when I got married, but now I'm married. But I I need to wait till I have more time. And so I'm gonna have kids first. Okay, you never have more time. So someone says, well, I'm going to wait till I'm retired, and then I'll have more time. I I was talking to someone the other day. I said, hey, how's retirement? I know they're retired, you know. I said, how's retirement going? They said, I'm busier than I've ever been. (laughs) Okay, I'm just saying to you, many of you wait to serve the Lord. But here's here's what he said about the faithful person, that when they got the gift from the Lord, they immediately began putting it to work. They went at once and put the money to work. They didn't wait. They started doing it immediately. Let me me say this a different way. God has called every one of you to be a servant, to serve, to serve one another. Some of you are like, well, when I have more time, I'll serve the church. I'll serve the Lord. Listen to me. You'll never have more time than you have right now. Stop waiting to put into effect the talents and abilities and time that God has given you and start doing it now. God never, listen, some of you think, I'm just convinced, some of you think that the, the talent that God gave you was for warming chairs That is not a talent. I'm, I'm just, I'm just want to challenge you. You're called to be the church. Just think about the verse. Ephesians 4.11 says that he gave, think about it, 4.11 says he gave apostles and prophets and evangelists and pastors and teachers to equip saints to sit in chairs at church. Is that what it says? To equip saints to do what? The work of the ministry. 
Listen, we're all called to ministry, every one of us, to serve the Lord with our resources, our time, our talent, our treasures. Let's get busy about doing that. That's what God's called. If you want to bring, listen, well, I wish God would show up and his kingdom would show up. His kingdom's not going to show up till you begin to walk in the kingdom. You've got to start doing that. That's why we provide you an opportunity to make a difference in the lives of people. Between services today, I was talking to one of our sweet ladies in our church. Her and her husband serve over in our children's ministry. And so I was just talking to him. I saw they had the kids' ministry shirt on. I said, oh, you serve in our children's ministry. Oh, yes. She goes, it's like herding cats. I thought, well, that's not a gleaming endorsement for working in the children's ministry. Now, here's what she went on to say. She goes, but I tell you what, I wish more people served in the children's ministry. She goes, these poor kids, some of the stories that we hear from some of these poor kids and things they have to go through and the things they're hearing, and I'm so grateful that I get an opportunity to share the love of Jesus with these kids. I wish some other people would take just once a month or twice a month to serve in our children's ministry. And by the way, I don't know if you know this or not. Listen to me. I don't know if you know this or not. We don't allow you to serve more than twice a month. Well, some of you sneak. <laughs> but we try to get you to keep from serving twice a month. So listen, I, listen, we're not gonna burden you, overload you, but I am saying to you, that's when we begin to operate in the kingdom is when we begin to serve other people and we wanna give you that opportunity here. Why not start now? What are you waiting for? What are you waiting for? By the way, so he says, went at once, put his money at work. Uh, verse 17 talks about the guy who had two bags. So verse 17 says, so also the one with two bags of gold gained two more. Think about the word so also. The word so also can also be interpreted as in the same way. In other words, in the same way that the guy with five bags of gold did it is the same way the guy with two bags of gold did it. At once, he put his money to work. Do y'all follow that? So God is calling us to get busy, to get busy. Here's number four. The master's reward is to entrust you with more and give you Joy, the master's reward, the reward for serving the Lord. Think about this. He's going to give you two things, the reward from the Lord. Number one is to give you more. I mean, I know you can't get more time, but I'm going to tell you, I I found in my own personal life, when I give more time to the Lord, it seems I have more time to get things done. Some of you who are always, well, I'm just so busy If you would learn to return to the Lord time, you would find you'd have more than enough time to accomplish what he's called you to do. We give back to the Lord so that he can give us more. Does that make sense? We give our talents to the Lord. Let me tell you, when when Pastor Lisa, she didn't know how to play a guitar, but she just said, I just feel like I need to start, I wanna wanna lead from behind a guitar. And I wanna develop my skills and my talents more. She began to practice and she worked hard at it. I remember there were times when she would come in and she would, her, she would just be doing this, looking at her fingers. She said, you all right? Well, my fingers are just raw from learning to play the guitar. But she just kept on putting more in, putting more in. This morning, you guys didn't get to experience this, but in the first service, the power went out. And so the only thing we really had, all this is electric, 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 right? Well, we, all we had was acoustic. Pastor Lisa just began to play acoustic because she had put the time in and the congregation just began to sing. Here's what I'm saying to you. When you give God back, he gives you more and all of a sudden now she has an ability to build. She's doing it better and better and better all the time. You know, uh, King James Version, gooder and gooder and gooder. No, it's not. Anyway, I'm just telling you he wants to give you more and notice this and give you joy. He wants to give you joy. Look, look at verse 21. His master replied, well done, good faithful servant. You've been faithful with a few things. I will put you in charge of many things. Come and share your master's happiness. Uh, if you look at verse 21, just drop down to look at verse 23. Exact same words. Literally no change between, tw- same verse, 21 23, same. You could switch them. You wouldn't know the difference. Verse 23, he says to the man who had two, master replied, well done, good and faithful servant. You've been faithful with a few things. I'll put you in charge of many things. Come and share in your master's happiness. I I hope that you're catching this. 
if the man who had one had just said, I'm going to just be faithful with the one that he's given me, God would have said, I'm convinced there would have been a 25th verse that would have said, his master replied, well done, good and faithful servant. And then he says, I'm gonna give you more and I'm gonna give you happiness. I, I, I'd like to say it this way. I wanna give you more and more happiness. I wanna give you more and more and more and more happiness. Because here's what I found, that people who begin to give back to the Lord, they're much more cheerful. They're much more happy because you're living the life, the kingdom life that God's called you to live. You're just, and, and by the way, just think about this. He says, share my happiness. Have you ever thought about this? The joy of the Lord is our strength. Some of you are like, oh, I'm just so tired. You need the strength of the Lord, brother. You need more of him. You need more happiness in your life. Say, how do I get there? It's when you begin to return more and more to him and I trust him and he returns to me. I have more time. I have more ability. I have more treasure. By the way, this is not a give to get message. Some of you will walk out of here today and say, well, the pastor said, if I'll give more, I'll get more money. This is not a give to get message. I don't believe in that. I don't think God teaches that. This is a message that says that if you'll give, he'll give you more so that you'll have more to give. This is a give to give message. I, I'm convinced the reason why God gives people more is because they were faithful with a little and he knows they'll be faithful if they have more. So he gives them more so they have more to give to become more generous. And the more you have to give, the more generous you become. The more generous you become, the more you have to give. It's a vicious circle. Many of you have not followed, you haven't been faithful with a little teeny tiny bit that God has given you and you wonder why, 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 why do they get blessed and I don't? You have too much time on your hand to think about them. Get busy with the little thing that God has given you, you'll have plenty. Does that, does that make sense? Have more. Okay, watch this. So then there's the last man, the third man. Verse 24 says, the man who had received one bag of gold came and said, Master, he said, I knew that you're a hard man, harvesting where you have not sown, gathering where you have not scattered. Look at verse 25. So I was afraid and went out and hid your gold in the ground. So here's what belongs to you. Okay, do you know what keeps us from truly serving the Lord? I want you to think about this. You know what keeps us from giving our talents? You know what keeps us from giving our treasure? It's fear. I was afraid, so I didn't do what you told me to do. Um, I, it's just funny to me uh, when we get new worship team members, and we're getting worship, new worship team members all the time, but they'll come on and they say, well, I just, they'll get on the platform the first time, their heart's just pounding out their chest. Okay, if fear was in control of them, would they even be up here? Some of you, you have abilities and talents and you're, you're squandering them because you're afraid. You know why we don't go talk to people about Jesus sometimes? Because we're afraid of what they're going to think, what they're going to say. Well, I, I may lose some friends if I go and tell them the truth about some things. Fear. Okay, listen, the Bible says you can't have two masters. Think about this for just a minute. God doesn't give us a spirit of fear. So if God doesn't give us a spirit of fear, there must be a spirit over fear. If you're giving into fear, you're not using your time or your talents or your treasure for the Lord because of fear. You're actually serving a different God, a different spirit. Do y'all follow that? So in other words, well, I'd work with the kids ministry, but fear. You have to get to the place like the worship team members get on and go, you know what, I'm scared to death. <clears throat> you know, these little demons running around here. I mean, these little ch children running around here scare me to death. But I'm just gonna say, okay, Lord, greater is he who's in me than he that's in the world. And I'm gonna trust you for my time and my talent and my abilities. And I'm gonna start serving you. And you use me, Lord. Okay, listen to me. Every Sunday morning, I have to come in and I, I pre prepare a message. I'm, I'm ready way before Sunday morning. I don't know if y'all know that, but you know, by Wednesday at noon, I try and always turn in my sermon notes if I can. And so I'm ready, but come Saturday, I'm spending time praying about what I'm gonna preach and what I'm gonna say. I wake up early Sunday morning. This morning, I woke up at 4 a.m. You know what's the first thought on my mind? I can't do this, Lord. 
I need your help, Lord. God, will you show up today and speak to the hearts and lives of people today, God? I need you today. Can I borrow your strength today? I need your help today. Listen, we all have those little fears inside of us, but we have to come to the place where we overcome them and say, because greater is he who's in me than he that's in the, in the world. Amen? Amen? So we're gonna give the Lord. So here's the last thing today, and that is the master's judgment is fair. The man who had one got thrown outside. What he had got taken away from him. Someone says, well, that just doesn't seem fair to me. He still called a master, and he brought back the one he gave him. Okay, I want you to think about it. Let me put it in a different term for you, okay? If there was a teacher in our public school and a principal in our public school, and the teacher had all that she needed to be able to teach. She had the education. She had the certificates. You know, uh, she had the training. Uh, she had everything that she needed to teach children, but she went into the room and she goes, well, I just don't want to do it. I just don't want to teach these kids. I know you put 25 kids in my class, but I just, I don't want to use all my training. I don't want to use the abilities that are within me. So I'm just going to sit here. I'm not going to do it. I just, I'm just not going to do it. I'm just not going to do it. Would it be fair to remove her from that classroom? Why is it fair? It's fair because it's unfair to let 25 be under her, to ruin them, right? I, I know we live in a world today that says don't worry about doing anything, but I'm just telling you, we've been hired for certain positions, and right? Okay, listen to me. It's not fair to the church and to the kingdom of God that one says, I have abilities, but I'm not going to use it for the Lord. So it's fair for the master to say, get rid of them. Do you follow that? Well, I don't want the Lord to say that of me because there is gonna be a fair judgment one day. And he's not looking, he doesn't care whether you have five or 10 or two or four. What he cares about is what did you do with what I gave you? By the way, God's been doing the same thing from the very beginning. He has entrusted you with task. When he told Adam in the garden, he said, look at all the animals, Adam. I want you to go name them. Think about this for a minute. I want you to take dominion over my creation and name the animals. God did not tell Adam what to name the animals. You ever thought about this? <clears throat> what if Adam messed up and named a hippopotamus a giraffe? Well, you would never know. Because you'd be calling a hippopotamus a giraffe today. See, God, God wasn't concerned with what he named them. He just said, go do what I've told you to do. Go name it. Get busy. I'm trying to tell you, God's saying to us, take dominion, get busy. It is, he is calling us to that. So I want to say this in a very real way. The master is here today. The Lord is here today. The Holy Spirit is here today. And what he wants to do is to awaken the giftings that are within you and to an extend an opportunity for you to begin to walk into kingdom living. The choice is yours. You can sit and never do anything, or you can enter into his kingdom and say, yes, Lord, all I have is yours. Lead me, and I will trust you. Can we bow our heads and close our eyes for just a moment? I always like to close every message with this question. What is the Holy Spirit saying to you? What's the Holy Spirit saying to you? Would you just ask him right now, Holy Spirit, what are you saying to me through this message today? Are you using the gifts, the talents, the treasure, the time that you have for the Lord? I do believe this, our time is short. Our time is short. And what I would love for you to do is get to the place where you'd say, wouldn't it be awesome if every person at Life Fellowship entered into the kingdom of God? Well, I'm praying for you. 
I'm praying that every one of us would walk into his kingdom and have kingdom living. Lord, everything I have belongs to you. I trust you. I am trusting you. So my question for you today is, will you say yes to the Lord? If you're here today and you've never met Jesus as your Savior, will you say yes to the Lord today? Will you make Jesus your master? He has plans for you. He has opportunities for you. Plans to prosper you and not to harm you. But you have to say, yes, Lord. Yes, Master. I trust you. In just a minute, our team is going to come here to the front. And if you need prayer for any reason, I want to invite you to come. Put your hand in their hand and say, pray for me today. But here's my big challenge for you today. Will you worship the Lord? As he is speaking to you, even now, will you worship the Lord? See, worship is more than just lifting hands. Worship is being obedient to his voice, saying yes to God. Will you worship the Lord today? So as our worship team begins to sing in just a moment, I want you to find your best place of worship, whatever that is. If you need to get on your knees, get on your knees. If you need to stand to worship, then you stand to worship. If you want to, if you need to be seated there in your seat and just let the Holy Spirit kind of pour over you, let the Holy Spirit pour over you. Just be seated there. Whatever the Lord leads you to do, I want to encourage you to do that. Worship him and then say yes to his invitation. And let's go out in the world realizing the Holy Spirit's going to go with us and empower us as we obey him. Father God, we love you. I thank you for every person in this room today who makes the decision to say yes to you, to say yes to you about their time, to say yes to you about their talents, to say yes to you about their treasure. And Father, I pray you'll get all of our hearts. You'll get all of our hearts. Receive our worship even now, Lord. May it be a sweet fragrance unto you. Come, Holy Spirit. We lay it all down before you today. Okay. I want you to find the place that God is telling you to get into, whatever posture that is. And I want you to worship the Lord as, there are, as our worship team comes and sings. And if you need prayer for any reason, our team is going to be here at the front. Okay, you ready? Okay, find your place of worship. Let's worship him.